Lumix GX1, let's take a step back in time. Um, so I took this out yesterday to Guildford to do a bit of photography around Guildford and I have to say, I mean it's a long time since I used a GX1 and I used to have, so it used to have a, I think they called it champagne colour or bronze or something like that and it was a special edition-y thing and I, I enjoyed that camera, I loved that camera but the problem was on the back, you know, you kind of got right in around the, um, around the buttons and you couldn't read it on that, or I couldn't read it on the, um, on the, the bronzy champagne colour model so eventually I got to a point where I'd had too much kit as I always have and I decided to sell some stuff I wasn't using and I wasn't really using the GX1 and I thought okay let's sell it so I sold it and um, pretty much immediately regretted that decision because I think they're a great camera um, and I really do mean a great camera because they can you know they're quite old now but they can still put I remember which year I'll put it on the screen um, they can st they still produce great results and um, let's go through some of the pros and cons pros um, has all of the basics um, 16 megapixels per plenty for most most situations most people um, uh, a good ergonomic layout lots of um, you know lots of uh, buttons for things you might need like ISO and self timers all that sort of stuff that I use reg on a regular basis uh, very easy to get to um, and it's got lots more it's got all these scene modes and all this sort of stuff which I never use pretty much um, uh, it does have customization it's got a couple it's got a couple it's got you can see that there's two C1 and C2 on the mode dial um, and there's also another uh, C1 is just C1 C2 is C2 or 3 or 4 I think so you can set up a number of different custom settings I just set mine to kind of a, one set to monochrome and one set to monochrome that's customised with some extra contrast and that sort of stuff so and you can you know you can you can set up your own kind of um, colour profiles and things should you so wish um, I don't bother with that sort of thing personally because I shoot raw and then um, post process um, but it is quite handy to have those things because obviously you do see on the back screen what it is you're, you're going to get and I like that particularly when I'm using it as a monochrome camera um, so that's nice so it, yeah, so basically it's got everything I need. Um, yep. Battery life on these is really, really good compared to a lot of, an awful lot of cameras. It's not a huge battery by any means, but it's very good. Can't say more than that. Um, very small camera. It's got a nice little bit of a kind of contoury grip there. And if you add a thummy thing here, Somebody, I saw somebody calling these the thumbs up, uh, which they may be. But you add one of those to it, and as you can see, it's a really good kind of one-handed, very easy to use one-handed camera at that point, which is nice if you're doing, if you're just wandering about in the street, that's a nice, a nice, um, easy way to use it. Um, it does do HD video. Um, it's okay for kind of B-roll clippy type things. Um, I did take a couple of little clips in Guildford yesterday the weather was horrendous for part of the time I was there absolutely tipping down and it's not weather sealed so that was a concern um, I, and that, I knew the forecast was bad so or wet should I say and that was why I took the G80 with me as well just to have a weather sealed option with me should I need it as it was I tried to stay under cover most of the time huh? um, next big pro is Micro four, foot, uh, micro, four, uh, micro four thirds lenses of which there are heaps and there are some very good ones and I think this 15mm Panalaika is a very good one 
and what I really, really, really like about it is, or one of the things I really like about it is you've got you've got the aperture ring on the lens, which I, I you know, I will always, um, always prefer that. Biggest annoyance with Olympus cameras is that even when you put this lens on an Olympus camera, the aperture ring doesn't work. It's always driven me mad, that. Um, cons with this camera? There are, I can only really think of a couple. One is, obviously, as you can see, it has no viewfinder. You can buy the accessory viewfinder. I think it's EVF2 or something. Something like that, LVF2. Um, which, you know, plugs in on the top. Not if you've got the thumbby thing on. Um, and I, I've had that accessory viewfinder at least twice and sold it twice. So I bought it, thought I'd use it, never used it, bought it, forced myself to use it, didn't really like it. It's pretty poor quality, um, better than nothing, I suppose. But it also, you know, it sits up there on the top and it's in the way for me most of the time. It's more of an annoyance than a, than a um, you know, must have feature. So I'm, I don't intend buying it again. Having said that, I'll probably buy it, but no, no, I'm not intending to buy it again. Um, that's gone now. Um, so there's no viewfinder, so that's a little bit of an, that's a, definitely a bit of an issue, really, to be honest. And another interesting thing is the, the shutter's quite loud. If I, um, I mean, I quite like the sound of the shutter, but that's pretty loud, I think, at that distance. Yeah, I think that's pretty loud. Um, so, you know, that's, um, to be honest, yesterday, photographing in the street in Guildford, nobody took a blind bit of notice, even though it is a loud shutter. Interestingly, I found, I did go out and try and, a little while ago, try to do some street photography with my um, Sigma SD15, which is a huge DSLR, I think it's huge anyway. Um, I tried to do a little bit of street photography with that. And again, I'm, I was amazed, nobody took a blind bit of notice of me. Nobody was, um, I think I'm Mr. Invisible, really. But, yeah, nobody took any notice whatsoever of me, so that was fine. Um, so I don't think even a shutter like that, in most situations in the street, it wouldn't be an issue. It might be an issue if you're in a church or something like that. So one to bear in mind, there's no electronic shutter available on this, so you'd need something else for that to be really, really quiet. Um, the only other thing I don't like about it, and I guess that's one of the things that makes me particularly keen on the aperture ring is the there's this thumb wheel on the back and it's not very tactile at all it's a bit um a bit i mean it works but it's just not very smooth it's not very nice i don't think not great it's all right it's not great so yeah i won't be selling this again in a hurry um I prefer the black, this black version to the champagne bronze version. Um, and I'll, this is one of those cameras where, to be honest, they're, they're, they're pretty cheap. They're not very expensive now. And you get an incredible amount of functionality for the money. I think I paid £85 for this one, which is probably at the top end of the market for these things now. But it is really good condition. Um, you get a lot, a lot of camera for your money. So I would highly recommend these things. I think they're brilliant.